So it's been about a month since Father's Day, and it's time to finally prepare the uh, rainbow trout that I caught a month ago. And I'm also going to be making some fried onion rings. So we'll have fried onion rings, which I'm currently uh, have soaking in uh, ice water. Uh, it's been soaking for about an hour and a half now, so that's probably more than enough. I, I just added extra ice just to keep it cold. And then I need to fillet the fish. Now, what happened here is rather interesting. I, After I got the fish home, I froze it inside a Ziploc bag and airtight. And then when I decided to thaw it out this morning, what I did is I ended up putting hot water inside the Ziploc bag to thaw it out a little bit faster. And then this is what happens. The skin is basically just peeling right off of there. So this is going to be like the easiest fillet ever to actually prepare. And I've got my pan here, which I'm going to fill up to the almost to the brim with water, sorry, sorry not water, uh, oil later, and we're going to be frying this fish in batter along with the onion rings in the same batter. And if I still have like batter left over, I might try making fried batter peppers, like little slices of pepper. Uh, we'll you know like rings of pepper as far as that goes. So pepper rings. We'll see how that goes. Uh, if I if I still have batter left, we'll find out. Okay, so as you can see in that last clip, the fish was actually falling off a little too easily off the bone, and it's just like in pieces. It's just, you know, like there's some of it that's just holding together, but most of it just kind of like fell right off the bone. It was just so easy to come off there. There's probably a reason why most people don't do what I did, which is to like soak the fish in hot water when you're thawing it out. It just turned all the meat into like mush that just slid off the bone very easily. And so now I have to figure out how am I going to cook this and still make it into like fried fish fillets. So I've got a little bit of problem solving here to do and I'm sure it's going to still taste good. It's just not going to be like uniformly shaped fillets. Uh, I'll have to figure something out. Okay, so soaking the, the fish in water to thaw it out was a huge mistake. Phenomenal, huge, just a gigantic, enorm, enormous, ignorant mistake on my part. Okay, I've never done this before, so hey, this is all try and error right now. Uh, just going by the seat of her pants, yay! This is going to be a catastrophe. So, I am pre-eating the oven to 250 and I have packed the fish into this uh, silicone muffin tin and I'm going to basically bake the fish for about 15-20 minutes basically I'm just trying to get, remove a lot of the water I don't want to cook it I want to remove a lot of the water that's in the fish right now because soaking it in the hot water basically made it super watery and if I were to, to try to put this in batter right now, it would just like fall off of it because it's too watery. I need to thicken it up, or sorry, you know, dehydrate it. Uh, I suppose I could just add like a whole bunch of uh, flour to it to, you know, that would thicken it up effectively. And But it, it's not going to produce the desired effect. I want to dehydrate it. 
So I'm going to bake it for a bit in the oven at 250 in the, this uh, silicone container and that should remove a lot of the water. And you'll notice because I'm still out, I still want that uniformly shaped chickens. So not chickens, <laughs> why did I say chickens? Fish, fish, fish here. I still want uniformly shaped pieces of fish. It'll, they'll be all mashed together because the fish was just falling apart, but at least they'll be roughly the uniform same shape and size when I'm done. So that's the plan. This could be a catastrophe. Or is it a fish catastrophe? Oh no, I don't know. I have no clue. We're, we'll just see what happens. Okay, so I have my little, shall we say, fish cakes that I've dehydrated in the oven. Uh, 15 minutes turned out to be uh, pretty much exactly what I needed. I drained the water off of it. There was a little bit of water inside the actual container. Uh, so I drained that off, and here's the dehydrated uh, fish cakes, so to speak, and, and they were nicely uniformly shaped. And now we're going to take one cup of flour. You notice I'm actually going a little bit over the one cup limit. That's because I want to make sure that the batter is good and thick. Not too thick, but I don't want to use too little. And I have one te teaspoon, one teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then we have one, sorry, one half teaspoon of baking powder. The baking powder will basically make the uh, batter more fluffy and airy, and that will add a little bit more, shall we say, to the crunchiness of the batter. Uh, then we also have some paprika here, and I'm going to actually use a fairly liberal amount. Uh, some recipes call for like a whole teaspoon. I am going to be a little bit more, shall we say cautious in that respect. I'm going to use more like a half teaspoon, but I'm going to kind of guess it at the same time. So I think that's about a half teaspoon. Okay. Oops. And then I'm going to have some pepper, which I'm going to freshly grind here. And I'm going to have a lot of that as well. It's going to take me a moment here. If you're bored, go watch one of my other videos. Yay! It will probably not be a fistastrophe like this one. I'm going to keep making that joke. Okay, so I think that's plenty of pepper. Maybe a little bit more. That's good. No more pepper needed. So I've got the pepper, the paprika, the salt, the baking sa powder, not the soda, not do not put baking soda in here, baking powder, okay. And now I'm going to just sort of stir that up a little bit with the end of a fork, nothing special. And now we have to start adding water to this. Now, some people might also add vinegar or beer. If you have those things handy, you don't have to use beer, you don't have to use vinegar, but I am going to use some water. Unlike my wet dry agreements ingredients, I probably should have actually got the water ready, but whatever. It's not that big of a deal. Now with this, I'm going to whisk it, reach inside my handy cup, and grab a whisk. So, wouldn't you know, my phone ran out of space, and it didn't record all of that last video. It stopped and put. So here is the batter. It's done. The batter is in a good consi consistency now. I've already tested it with the spoon, which unfortunately, I can't show you that again. But basically what happens is, you dip the spoon in there, you, you pull it back out, you take your finger, you go like this, and there's batter on this side and batter on that side. And then the batter doesn't slide off there, it doesn't slide off this way. And it, you know it's not so watery that you know it you know goes back in towards the middle, uh, but it goes off fairly easily. It's not hard, but it's like you know a, a decent consistency, and that's how you test it. And another way some people might test it is to just look what that actually does to the whiskey. Like you pick up a bit of it, you know, like you can't really stick that much on the whisk anymore. So that's a good consistency. Now the question is here: What temperature is my oil at? I want it to be. Quick here. I want it to be 365. 
that's the temperature I want for the oil. And before the video cut out, you know, when the, I, I already recorded this, but the video disappeared on me because it didn't record correctly. So that looked like it's really hot. I think that just went up to 400. That might actually be too hot. I'm going to cool it down. We're going to take it down to 7. We're going to take the lid off. It's going to actually be too hot. Let's just test it again. It is saying it's 400 now. So, so what happened is, when I was making the previous video, I was, got the thermometer in there. It was only 250 at the time. I was recording. I was like, okay, well, it's going to take a while before it gets up to 350. Clearly, I needed to go off for a few minutes, come back when it's heated up, and then test it again. And it is now definitely above 365. In fact, it's above 400. It's actually too hot. Shit. Well, that's another catastrophe. This thing's falling apart. So... That's no good. I'm going to just pause the video there and fish that out from underneath there without burning my hand. Yeah, more fish catastrophe to come. So I kind of wish I had recorded that. Um, okay, you now you'll remember in the video, uh, the battery fell out of this. It landed here, next to that. Uh, I moved the, I put, I stuck the lid on the frying pan. I moved it over there. Uh, I put a glove on while I was doing all that. I then picked up the battery because I was going to put it back inside here and then I needed to somehow get the lid underneath there which is currently looks like it's melting. So I'm not going to be able to use that anymore. And yeah, the, I was holding the battery and it exploded in my hand. Thankfully I was wearing this at the time. There's now pieces of the battery on the floor. And there's a bit over here on the counter, if I can just show that to you. If you see there, that is burnt bits of battery from the, you know, the explosion. I am going to toss that in the garbage can right now. So yeah, that was fun. Uh, more catastrophe to come along. Uh, what do we, okay, I need to get that piece of plastic out. So I've turned off the oven. I need to get that piece of plastic out of there because it's just going to cause like a fire or something like that if I don't fish it out of there soon enough. So I got to cool that all down. I got to go through the whole process over again. I got to find the other thermometer, which uh, works differently. It doesn't have a battery. It, uh, it basically just turns the dial. So then you have to actually read it and determine what temperature it is. So I have to go through this whole process over again. Uh, that'll be fun. So I am now double frying, and you'll notice also double battering the fish. And I've also double battered some of the uh, onion rings. I'm gonna use up the last of the onion rings with the double batter, and then I'm gonna also double batter any other onion rings that I have. And if you can hear in the background, I've got a baby screaming because he's hungry, and I'm like, I'm trying to make food. Okay, maybe not food for you, but I am going to make food for you soon enough. So, I got a baby to feed, and I'm not going to bother uh, making any more videos after this. Except maybe some photos of what the food looks like when it's done. I got to go feed my baby.